Hey, I'm Jonathan, and this is Redhead. In this video, I want to share with you my process of calculating the exact curve that this spinning rod magically fits through. If you still have some high school level math skills and want to try and find this curve yourself, then now would be a good time to pause this video. Otherwise, let's jump right in. I started by thinking about the extreme cases. What will happen if the rod was exactly vertical or if it's horizontal? In the original demonstration that I saw, this angle was fixed and I had to resort to using my imagination. So when I built my version of this, I took the effort to make this angle adjustable. The rod can be freely rotated in 30 degrees increments and I made a few extra slides that will help illustrate what happens in each state of the rod. This is the most trivial case in which the spinning rod is tracing a cylinder, so its cross section will obviously be a vertical line. This case is still pretty simple, but maybe less trivial. The rod is tracing a ring-like surface and it results in a horizontal line. A top view shows that the distance between the rotation axis and the point the rod intersects with the surface is not constant and is smoothly changing between these two distances. Between the two extreme cases we have infinitely many curves like the tight curve we've seen before and this more subtle curve. We can derive the general formula for these curves using simple trigonometry. Let's start by defining a coordinate system for this problem. We'll define the y-axis so it coincides with the axis of rotation and the x-axis to be on this plane aligned with the middle of the rod. We'll mark the offset between the rod and the rotation axis with a lowercase d and the tilting angle of the rod with theta. The angle of rotation around the axis will be marked by alpha. We are interested in finding the curve traced by the intersection point of the rod and the xy plane. This point changes as we change the rotation angle alpha. A simple way of finding this curve would be to see how the x and y coordinates of the intersection point change when we change alpha. Let's have a look from above. We can immediately recognize some of the things we've just marked. We are interested in finding the horizontal distance between the intersection point and the origin. This is the x-coordinate of our curve. We have a right triangle with a constant leg with length d. And x is simply the hypotenuse of this triangle and can be easily expressed in terms of alpha. It is d over cosine alpha. Alright, we now have x, so we're halfway there. Finding y is a little more tricky, but we won't let it stand in our way. First we'll find the other leg of our right triangle, which is d times the tangent of alpha. Now let's get a different viewing angle. In this view, the leg we've just calculated is here, and we can see that it's part of another right triangle, and the other leg of this triangle is our desired y-coordinate. At first glance, it seems that we don't have enough information to calculate it. We need additional information about this triangle. Luckily, we already have the top angle. It's equal to the rod's tilt angle, theta, because this leg and the rotation axis are parallel, and these are corresponding angles. Now we get that the leg, which is our y-coordinate, is equal to d times the tangent of alpha over the tangent of theta. So we have an expression for x and for y, both in terms of a third parameter, alpha. Note that d and theta are not parameters, they are constants. In this case, d is 50 millimeters and theta is 60 degrees. So the two expressions we have are a parametric representation of our curve. Did you guess what it is? Exactly, it's a hyperbola. Don't recognize this representation? Let's lose the parameter alpha and get an explicit equation for this curve. Isolating alpha from the expression for x, we get that alpha is equal to the arc cosine of d over x. Plugging it back into the expression for y, we get this scary looking expression. But we must remember that when we see an inverse trigonometric function inside a regular trigonometric function, we can sometimes massage the expression so that they will cancel each other. And so is the case here. If we expand the tangent into sine over cosine, then the denominator simply becomes d over x. For the numerator, we can replace the sine by the square root of 1 minus cosine squared. Now this simply turns to... Squaring both sides of the equation and tidying up a bit, we get... which is exactly the known equation for hyperbola. The first two equations we found are usually taught in school as one of the parametric representations of the hyperbola. I hope you found this derivation simple enough, using only two triangles and simple trigonometry. Unfortunately, this is not the path I took when I originally did it. I used a much more complex approach, that started with the parametric vector representation of my rod in 3D space, then multiplying it by a rotation matrix around the y-axis, followed by a projection to the xy-plane. It was much more cumbersome and a lot more algebra to do. 
As we learn more complex techniques that can solve a broader range of problems, we tend to neglect and maybe forget the more basic approaches that can sometimes lead us to the solution much quicker. I'm telling you this because I think it's important to continue practice problem solving all the time, to always know what approach fits best to your current problem. If you want to see how I actually built this, go and check out the build video I made. You can also find more stuff on my website, including plans, templates, and the 3D model for the angle adjustment mechanism, if you wish to build one for your desk. If you enjoy my videos and want to help me produce more of them, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Until next time, bye!